Well, 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 well. This is the beginning of a new series of videos that I'm going to be doing, where I, obviously, rank the queens of each season based on their track records. First, I will have to give a bit of an explanation, and I implore you to watch that part too, but if you're impatient, I will divide the video into parts for you to watch so that you can skip to the actual ranking. However, if you do skip the essential information, please then don't comment on the actual ranking as you don't have all of the information necessary. So what did I do? Well, with all of the knowledge that we have for the past 12 seasons of regular Drag Race, I decided to rewatch every season and create a ranking of each cast for each season. I had wanted to do, and had been asked to do, a ranking of every single queen, but comparing the queens from different seasons isn't really an exact science, and there are many flaws to it, as each season is different. Plus, with Drag Race pumping out a season each year, the amount of updating of that list would get confusing after two or three seasons. Thus, I'm just going to rank the queens per season. The point system is from 0 to 5, with the placements being eliminated, bottom 2, low, safe, high, and win. I mini challenge win grants you one point as like a little bonus. I know many people don't think mini challenges should be counted, but, and as I've explained in an older video, most of the mini challenges test how quick and creative the queens can be. There are certain rules of symmetry that are to be followed with the placements, and I paid close attention to the exact critiques each queen got, as well as what the story of the episode was to properly and further define each queen's placement. There are no points awarded for the finale, unless the finale is lip sync for the crown episode, as that is still a competitive episode. Queens get eliminated based on their performances, whereas in the first three seasons, they just don't advance into the final lip sync, which also never matters. The tables I used for all of my previous videos, where track records, PP scores, and whatnot are mentioned, I just wanted to revise because they were made from memory, and a lot of the times I had to go back on them and correct myself, though the corrections would always be a point or two off. I felt the need to properly revise each season because. 1. Everyone and their mothers can edit the Wikipedia and Wikia placements without ever giving proper reasonings. And also, there is someone on Instagram who a couple of times caught my mistakes, pointed them out to me, and just overall always gave good feedback and good reason for their arguments, so they kind of inspired me, let's say, to do this. It's expected then that, after the rankings, I share certain notes about certain placements. Really, just the low, safe, high ones, because they are the murky ones. I will also include the biggest winner slash loser for each season. The biggest winner is the queen that plays the most higher than her actual placement in the season, and the biggest loser is the queen that placed the most lower. I read the argument that it should be the other way around, like you're more of a winner if you, despite your poor showing, make it far, and that's a valid argument. But to me, track record is more important than your longevity in the competition, which we see with the biggest winner on season 1, but all in good time. So let's begin. Obviously, in the last ninth spot is Pork Chop. While she did not show much of anything but poise on the show, she still is a legend of the show. In the 8th place is Akasha, the queen that took Pork Chop out of the competition. Her PP score is 1, and she's at a minus 1 with her placement, as she originally placed 7th. Akasha is mostly remembered for her attitude, but I think we should also remember her for her really good lip syncs. Sadly, her performances in the two lip syncs she won are almost deemed as negligible because neither Pork Chop nor Tammy were actually lip syncing against her. They just kind of swayed around the stage. Furthermore, her performance in the lip sync against Chanel is also forgotten because of the stunt that Chanel pulled. In the seventh place is Tammy Brown, with a PP score of 1.5 and a plus one to her placement because she was originally eliminated by Akasha in the second episode. Tammy is still pretty relevant in the Drag Race community to this day, and is also pretty much still liked, so let's try to keep it that way. In the sixth place, just like originally, we have Jade, with a PP score of 2.25. Jade is remembered for being one of the most beautiful queens from that season, with some very interesting runway looks, that could also perform really well. She's a great dancer. Sadly, since she did grab Rebecca Glasscock's during their lip sync, she was taken out of the competition. 
Also, she has abs to die for. She's still doing drag, so check her out on Instagram if you have not. Chanel is in the fifth place with a PP score of 2.3 recurring. Chanel never won a single mini or maxi challenge during her stint on season one, but she's still one of the best parts of that season. She's so entertaining and a lot of the time funny when she isn't even trying to be funny. She's like the uncanny valley of Chad Michaels personality wise. And it's great. She's great. Rebecca Glasscock is fourth here. So she has a minus one to her placement and a 2.83 recurring PP score. Rebecca was the original main villain of a season, the original queen that was favored just for being pretty and awarded for wanting to look more feminine. I don't think she still does drag like as a main career or as often, but honestly go look up her Instagram, Rebecca is still cute out of drag to this day. In the third spot, somewhat shockingly maybe, is Bibi Zahar Benet, with a PP score of 3.3 recurring. As she is the winner of season 1, she has a minus 2 to her placement. I was always the first to point out that BB is the weakest winner of the main franchise, and that she only won because, and it was pointed out on the show, she was the most like Rue, so I never agreed with her winning. However, as I rewatched the show, I understand why she won. Whereas most of her competitors would go into certain challenges saying that they weren't ready for them, BB even when she knew the challenge wasn't up her alley, would joke about it for a second, then absolutely and completely turn it out in the challenge. She doesn't even sew and she won the ball episode. She also brought really good runways, really bringing the high fashion element to the first season of Drag Race that made some of her competitors look like they were doing drag for the first time. She was exquisite, she was poised and confident to a degree that was never delusional. In the second place is actually the queen that was eliminated when going up against BB and that's Ongina. She has an impressive PP score of 3.8, which positions her three spots above her original placement. Ongina was revolutionary for Drag Race at the time, and honestly somewhat still is. She brought a perspective on drag and fashion that was alternative and something that not everybody could pull off. She was always honest, always entertaining, and always someone that you could root for. In the recap episode of the season, Fru kind of declares her the robbed queen that could have won the season. Sadly, she did not have the best showing on All Stars 5, but I believe that her season 1 legacy still lives on. And in the first place, the queen with the highest PP score this season, and one of the highest scores of all time on Drag Race is the legend Nina Flowers. Her PB score is 4. Now what can I say about Nina Flowers that I have not said literally every single time that I talked about her? I love Nina Flowers. <laughs> She's a legend, her legacy was honored and loss was avenged with Evie Oddly's win on season 11, and we love to see it. We love Nina Flowers, the first ever Miss fan favorite and the first ever Miss Congeniality in this house. So if you were paying attention, the biggest winner of the season is Angina, while the biggest loser is BB. Now that we're done, let's pull out the table and let's go over the notes. First, for episode 2. Akasha's team is the losing team, so their placements are safe, low, and bottom two. As there are four of them, and there are four available placements, each placement has to be filled. Since Jade was called safe first, and because most of the positive critiques were given to and about Jade's choreography, as well as Rue saying that he wanted to see more from BB, Jade is safe and BB is low. This is just semantics, BB did just as well as Jade, but we're reading into the edit of the episode as well, as I've previously mentioned. For episode 3, Rebecca is safe, because the judges were more complimentary of BB, Nina and Angina, and out of those top 4, Rebecca was the only one that got a negative critique. In episode 4, Nina got more negative critiques than BB, so she's safe. In episode 5, the most negative critique that they had for Nina was that her partner looked like a drag queen. On a drag competition show. Other than the obvious implication that this critique excludes all women from doing drag, it's just a very stupid critique, which I talked about in my The Mistreatment of Nina video, so you can go watch that if you want. Just to further show you how stupid this is, Rebecca won for making her partner look like her, but Nina was criticized for it, and Chanel did not end up winning the challenge because her partner in the face did not look like her. Come on now, are we asking too much if we ask for consistency? Because of how nonsensical this allegedly negative critique was, Nina was no way low. She gets a safe placement here. And yes, 
I know that Rue told her that she was barely safe, so some people read that as low, but again, only one negative critique that didn't even make sense with how the rest of the critiques went does not equal a low placement. What kind of gaslighting was that entire episode? And that's it. That's the video. Are you into this idea of me doing this ranking for every season? I also want to mention that after I do the main franchise plus All Stars, then I'll do Drag Race Thailand because it's the best spin-off, and if you ask me, it's the best version of a drag competition show, including the non-drag race related shows, and it's fantastic. And then maybe after that I'll do the Drag Race Holland, Drag Race Canada, Drag Race Germany, if that was a thing, I don't know. But regardless of the fact, Thank you for watching.